So when you think about budget smartphones, you don't usually think of the Galaxy A series. And in my hand, I have the Galaxy A52. The first thing about this device is its striking look and feel. Now I've got to say Samsung has done a really good job over the last year improving the A line to make it look something more premium. Now this device in my hand here is priced at $500. It doesn't look like a $500 phone. It actually looks more premium than you'd expect. And it comes packed with a ton of features that I think you are definitely gonna like. Now, fans of the headphone jack will be really pleased to see the headphone jack is still there. Something, of course, we're missing from a lot of devices, but of course, you can use that with your Galaxy A52. Now, I've come to say that I've really come to enjoy using this device for a number of things. The display is 6.5 inches, and in your hands, it feels really comfortable to hold, uh, and it's got a really nice kind of you know, square or rectangular feel to it. Now this display is a 120 hertz display. So you're talking about some really nice smooth motion all the way through, which is great. Uh, whether you're surfing the web, whether you're on Instagram browsing up and down or on Twitter, it doesn't matter. And of course, while you are gaming, that of course is the big part. So speaking of gaming, this device rocks a Snapdragon 750G. Now it's a 5G processor should give you some really good performance on the games you like to play. And speaking of those games, we ran through a couple of them. The first, of course, is Call of Duty Mobile, where we're able to go to max settings, not everything at max, but at least max uh, graphical settings, and we'll be able to play the game at 57 frames per second. As you can see, it runs smooth. It really takes advantage of that 120 hertz display to give you really fluid motion. This is where 120 hertz makes a lot of sense for shooters like Call of Duty Mobile, and also games like PUBG Mobile, where we're able to run this at, of course, ultra smooth, which ran really well at 40 frames per second. Again, we couldn't max it out, but you're not aiming to max out your graphical performance on a device like this, especially at this price point. You're looking to get the best out of it, and we did get the best out of the device. Now, one game, of course, a lot of people like to check out is Genshin Impact, and with Genshin, it does recommend low settings uh, to play the game, but I tried to run it at medium settings where I got 26 frames per second. Uh, it's best recommended to run it at low where you get at least closer to 30 frames per second for this. That's just the standard for Genshin here, and I think it's fine. I think the gaming performance you're going to get from this is really good for its price point. And I look at this device as more of a holistic package for a lot of people. This is a, a device that you're going to get the balance of, say, gaming performance, which you just looked at, and also things from the camera. We have a 64 megapixel main camera se uh, sensor. We also have a 12 megapixel ultra wide, which is great. Uh, and we have a 30 two megapixel front facing camera. So let's jump in and take a look at video from the camera. So let's start camera. Now the Galaxy A52A shoots at 4K30 with the front facing camera, as well as the rear camera, which I'm shooting right now at 4K30, kind of walking down slowly um, and giving you an idea of what you can do with that. As I mentioned, the rear camera also shoots 4K, uh, 4K. And you can switch to that camera while recording, which is pretty cool. And you can also switch between the lenses. So I have the regular lens here, uh, main lens, and I have the wide lens, and I also have the 2X zoom lens. So you've got that all built in, switch back, and you can see me here. It is a windy day. I am not using the earbuds. I just had them because I was listening to music. I'm out here, there's no one around me, which is why my mask is off, but I do have my mask with me. But you have an idea of how well it shoots video at 4K 30, and of course, you also have Super Steady, which I'm about to show you right now. This is Super Steady. So looking at the images from the camera, you can see that this camera does a good job, not a great job, but a good job at capturing at different points in time. During the daytime with the rear camera, you're gonna get a lot of good uh, images. Uh, this, this, this nice uh, HDR with that as well. And I think overall, you're gonna capture some really nice images with this camera. Now the two megapixel zoom is great. You can zoom go up to 10, but that's all digital. I would just say keep it at two megapixels and just stay right there. Low light photography is also good, not great, but again, it's a balance for what you're getting with this camera in total, which is really, really nice. 
for a lot of people. Now this comes packed with a uh, fast charging uh, up to 25 watts. It doesn't come with a 25 watt charger. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, it comes with a 15 watt charger, but you can get a Samsung or third party charger to use to get that faster charging on the device. Now, I think when you look at the Galaxy A52, you're gonna find something that you like very pleasing just in sight and just in terms of looks, it's gonna look like a device you wanna pick up and use. And I think functionality, it's going to impress a lot of people. If you don't wanna spend a lot of money going up to a Galaxy S21, which is priced at 799, or go all the way to the Ultra, which is about a thousand or more, this at $500 is well-priced and well-balanced, which begs the question, how will the Galaxy S21 FE fit into this ecosystem the Samsung is creating? Is it going to be well-priced in between uh, the A52 and the S21? We have to wait and see. If you wanna see more about other Galaxy devices like the Galaxy S20 FE or the Galaxy S21, check out the videos here on the channel. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.